All right. Well, this is Nappy, the Nappy one, Naptown born. Born in Naptown, raised in the burbs, moved back to Naptown in adulthood. <laughs> All right, man. As promised, I'm back with uh, with my Zeb Judah versus Amir Khan uh, prediction. Uh, the last video, some of you may uh, or may not have noticed that I didn't answer any comments. I don't think I have. I don't think so. I wasn't intending to. Sometimes when I go through my comment section, though, I got to fucking fucking answer some shit and I can't remember if it anyway the whole point of that video was to ask you guys you guys out there whoever was watching it you know what they thought about Zab's chances and um that's why I didn't reply because if I ask you guys what you think and you tell me well I'm not gonna argue with you I told you to tell me what you think <laughs> see what I'm saying so um you know, it is what it is, and I put those those thoughts out there for for absolutely a reason. Because when I was when I was going through this prediction in my head, how I how I thought the fight might go, and I was leaning on those factors and going, well, how much of a factor are they really? And, and my answer to that, you know, was varied, but in general, Khan uh, has, of course, gained, you know the extreme favorite to be in this fight. I, I, there's a couple guys out there who are actually predicting Zab to win, and I'm going to throw my hat uh, into that same ring as well, but we all know why I'm doing it, right? Because I'm just a Zab Judah fan. Well, I predicted against him in Mabuza, and he proved me wrong. So, at least for Zab, the hype around Zab is uh, more, more about giving him deserved credit than it is hyping him up for Khan. As it stands, uh, like I said, he stands on his own merits uh, in this fight. Timmy don't want to fight, so, you know, Khan already fought Maidana and Ortiz moved up, and so who is he going to fight that means anything? Zab Judah. <laughs> and Zab Judah deserves this fight. Um, I have watched the Matisse fight. I understand full well that on any given time, the scorecard for that fight would likely read in favor of Matisse. But I don't agree that it was a blowout. I do agree that it was a close enough fight that I'm not going to sit here and scream, robbery, robbery, robbery. But in my humble opinion, after watching the fight, Zab did lose. But, but okay. So we got a gift decision. Like, that's never happened before. Let's look. Okay, instead of focusing on the guy who we see as the big show, you know, the guy who comes to the big show but never wins. He, he's always the fucking runner-up with Zab Judah, right? I mean, that's how a lot of you guys see Zab Judah is. He's, he's never the winner. Um, it's always second place. Uh, it's, not, it's not ever on top, even though he was undisputed champ at one time. You know, even, even though he's had uncountable experience fighting at a weight that is likely too big for him. And I'm sorry if you don't feel that way, but 147 was challenging for Zab. And for that, I mean, that alone <laughs> and and the reason, you know, is the reason why he has fans and things, you know. There was a time when he, he was just too dominant at 140. There was a time when he needed to move up to get the good fights and he did and he got the belts there and got respect ended up getting buzzed by Baldemir you know Mayweather Kostazu Claudi Kodo all these guys have beat him they have Matisse beat him but not dominated so why so why are we hyping him now why is it why is he still fucking relevant I think that's the question some of you guys are really asking. Like, why are we still giving a fuck about Zab Judah? Well, <laughs> I've never seen him in a boring fight. Why do people give a fuck about Arturo Gotti? I mean, rest in peace, but looking at his fights, he never... <laughs> 
when he did step up to to the high class level of boxers, you know, he got handled. So, I mean, yeah, give him all the heart and all the credit in the world, but as far as on a on a on a skill wise level, Gotti wasn't there. But we all still love him. I still love Gotti. I love his fights. The Mickey Ward trilogies were epic in a sense. Whether or not they mean anything in the grand scheme of boxing, you know, has yet to be determined because the fights are so memorable that I'm positive that at least one of them will live on through time and, you know, be on an ESPN Classic 20 years from now. So why hype Zab Judah right now? Well, because he hasn't lost enough of a step for to rightfully call him shot. And because he did beat people that, you know, Kaiser Mabuza, Matisse, that people did not think he was going to beat. And, and when it comes to Matisse, I saw improvement from Matisse to Mabuza in the form of control. Now, yes, of course, when he's ducking, dodging, being Purnell-ish, he needs to come up and make the other guy pay for it. But And, and you're also right, it's, it's not a new trick. And to this, I'm talking to precise presenter. This video isn't made in, in a response to him, but I just got through watching his video before I did mine. But this is more about bringing my prediction around when, when I said I was going to. But just so happens this video was there when I, when I jumped on to do this. Anyway, I, I sidetrack a lot. You guys know me. I, di I digress. Anyway, back to Zab Judah and, and Amir Khan and hype and overhype and who's hyped and What's going to happen? This is how I see the fight going. I see the first six rounds going much like the Mabuza fight. Now let's talk about leaky defense. Mabuza had shit defense. Khan doesn't have shit defense. Khan has a leaky defense, though. He gets hit. And for a guy that's vulnerable to getting hit, to go up against a guy like Zab Judah who's very fast, very crisp, very accurate when he decides to throw, and also has, in my opinion, one-punch KO power. That in and of itself is dangerous and makes it more of a puncher's chance. You know, makes it more than just a puncher's chance. Um, Zab Judah has way more than a puncher's chance in this fight. Backtracking. Con. Hype. All this. It wasn't a year and a half ago where people were talking great about Khan. But then the other side of the coin was stop overhyping this dude. He's not that good yet. And mostly we heard that from the UK fans who were saying, you know, look, we've been watching this guy. And, and yeah, he's good. But he's still got a lot to learn. And he fought Pauli Malignaggi. I'm a guy who gave him enormous credit for that. Enormous. But at the same time, Pauli has no pop. He's got no power. No way to make you back off. It was it was a good exhibition fight for Khan to show off the skills. After that, respectfully taking on Maidana. But in that fight, fight of the year, I expected Khan to box Maidana's ears off. Maidana being relentless or not, I expected Khan to, to keep distance. And, and even though Maidana was coming forward, all you had to do was sidestep him a little bit. Look at the what Morales did. And, and when we all fucking thought Morales was going to get murdered by this guy. Okay? And then look at the Khan fight again. With Maidana. He gets mad credit. I'll give him mad credit. But Khan is susceptible. Khan's defense isn't that great. He likes to, to muff up. And yeah, I'm kind of coining that from he didn't say the same term, but Joe Habib, who's recently done a prediction. It's this muff, this earmuff shit of cons that, that is posing, posturing his defense. And it's really not. I think Khan's there to be hit all night long. And I think, like I said, the first six rounds going to go much like the Mabuza fight. Um, because I think... Zab Judah will see the uh, the virtue of patience for this. This is his last chance. His very last one. Nobody else in this entire community will ever, you know, be giving this guy these kind of mad props again if he doesn't show up for this fight. This is his last shot, 
you know, at a, at greatness and his last shot at, you know, getting a chance from the rest of us. And as a fan, I'm willing to give him that chance. As a matter of fact, I think he's going to win. I think, Con, like I said, Khan's there to be hit all night. Khan is much easier, much more easy to hit. Much easier to hit Khan than it is to hit Judah. Cleanly. Not to mention Judah's punches just are overall cleaner. Khan's chance in this fight isn't <coughs> isn't to KO Judah. Of course, that's an option. That's a way he could go. My opinion, Khan's best chance is to smother Judah when he can and keep the volume up because Judah doesn't throw volume. He doesn't throw volume at all. He throws crisp punches and he throws hard punches and he throws meaningful punches, but he doesn't throw enough of them. Khan also, in the Maidana fight, faded late. <sighs> not not so much like a front runner, like Zab Judah fades late, but he did fade. And he did get hurt. And he was vulnerable to a much slower guy, a much lesser skilled fighter who basically relies on his power way too much. Maidana. Khan is also very green. Who has he fought that he's had to worry about? He didn't have to worry about Polly. Okay, I, I got proved wrong in that fight. You know, I, I like I said, I, I'm not sure if I picked. I think I picked Polly to win. So I have to give him his respect. But at the same time, Khan didn't have to worry about Polly's power. And Khan, you know, was comfortable coming forward the whole fight. I don't think he's going to be so comfortable coming forward once he gets a taste of a couple straight lefts from Zab Judah. I think... <laughs> I think actually Zab can make Khan fall back a little bit better than Maidana ha can because Judah is a bit more controlled. I know it sounds strange talking about Judah, but I mean his punch control, his accuracy is way better. We're not talking about looping punches. And when you put the fucking earmuffs on, that straight left is there, that straight upper, or you're that, that powerful uppercut of Zab's, which is like his signature, is there. Um, my prediction is... Khan will not adjust to Zab's style that easily. He will not acclimate himself that easily um, to Judah, and he'll be relying heavily on Roach's instructions. So whether he follows it or not, we'll see. I think Zab's going to surprise people, though. I think he's going to knock out Khan. And not because Khan's shitty or anything. I think Khan's going to get caught later. I think in round 8 or 9, I'm calling for... Uh, to make it more specific, I'm I'm predicting Judah by KO in the eighth round. Khan's green as fuck. I think this experience and Judah's style, his presence, his his straighter punches, that uppercut, I think this all factors in. And and for me, call me biased, I'm sure I am, but but for me, this isn't about overhyping Judah. It's about whether or not you really think he has a shot, I think he does. It's about whether or not you really give him respect for his fights, even if he's lost them. Everybody, when you talk about Zab Judah losing his big fights, always keep in mind that De La Hoya lost a lot of his big fights too. But yet he gets mad respect. So <laughs> why, why is it so strange? That uh, you all of a sudden see Judah getting all kinds of all kinds of mad respect when he's coming against Khan. I think it's it Khan's gr I don't know Khan's greenery just really makes me suspect of Khan right now. And you say greenery, he's he's I don't know. I don't think he's gonna act like I said. I don't think he's gonna adjust well to Judah. And I think Judah takes advantage of it. And Khan's game is on the outside, and Judah Judah can play that game. Judah can play that game better, in my opinion. Um, he can get under Khan's jab, and he can land that vicious uppercut. And I'd, let me tell you one thing. If that vicious uppercut lands the first time cleanly on Khan, I think he takes Khan's courage. And that's what I see happening. I think, you know, this is no, <laughs> this is no pushover fight. This is no gimme. In my opinion, it is a toss-up. I'm predicting Zab. But I can just as easily see Khan outpointing Judah for 12 easy rounds and coasting. I just don't think that that's going to happen. Zab Judah by KO in the eighth round. Combine this with my other video and you got a full-on analysis.